We welcome the head coach, my guy Dave wants that into Caps Corner. Brought to you by Great Clips. All right, coach. It was a lot of fun working together yesterday. Bears find a way to win. The numbers don't say that they had a great performance, but the result does. Yeah, and the results, uh, plus one in turnover margin, right? I mean, that's a start, and they beat them, you know, four to one, whatever it was, with penalties. Three, what did the Bears have, two or three? Twelve to three. Twelve to three. So you beat them on penalties, you beat them on turnovers, and you match them really in pretty much in sacks, tackle for losses, and big plays given up. So, you know, you push in those areas and uh, you beat them in the turnover margin and penalties. More times than not, that's going to equal a win. Okay, so I'm reading all the San Francisco papers and all the articles, The Athletic, and all of them. And they're all back there out west lamenting. How did we lose to that team? Right. <laughs> Have you been in games like that where you look back and go, like, if you lose to a really good team, you're right, they beat us but where you thought there's no way we're losing. Well, my first year at the Bears, we played three games in 11 days, if you remember that. And I, it, I don't think any team has ever done that before. And on the road, and won all three of them. And we were underdogged in all three. So I, uh, I, I really can appreciate the Bears, you know, creating a big upset like this. And, and I've been on the other side of the coin, too, to answer your question. Um, and, and usually it comes down to, you know, not – being able to make a big play, but it usually comes down to making more bad plays. And that's how I think San Francisco would look at this. You know, we made more mistakes than they did. And uh, when that happens, uh, and the field conditions kind of neutralize things a little bit, that's all part of it, and all of a sudden you lose the game. Okay, so Justin made a huge play. Bears look like they're not going to score any points. We're all sitting back there going, yep. we may get shut out. And then he rolls left. David Montgomery drags a couple defenders across, and he finds Dante Pettis down there. What was your take on that play? Because it showed me that Justin can make special things happen. He can. Two things showed up. But going back to that, you know, I remember specifically that players were commenting that in practice, in training camp, that they were talking about the scramble drill. And what the scramble drill is was what we saw last night. When the quarterback breaks the pocket, what, you know, he's under pressure, just like Justin was. You get out of the pocket, you start scrambling. If you're basically on the side where he's scrambling to, forget about the route that you were running. Everybody come back to the quarterback, give him a chance, break away from your guy, give him a chance to make an easy throw. If you're away, try to get away and try to get open. Uh, that's the premise of it. Obviously, the different routes, everyone's got their little little tweaks to it. But I remember the Bears saying, we had never done that before. You know, this was something new. This was, well, here it is. Game one, we're on the scramble drill. And uh, the best, most encouraging thing to me, you mentioned Justin Fields, Cap. He, he showed arm strength to throw the ball deep all the way across the field, okay, with a wet ball. That was not many, not all quarterbacks can do that, trust me. And the second thing was, he commented, and we talked about it on the show, he commented that he knew that that was his safety valve read, Correct. right? So that kind of tells me, ah, you know, the light's going on. I think a year ago, and I said this last night, I really believe that a year ago that same play happens, he tucks the ball and runs for four or five no yards. No question about it. He's not thinking about guys coming back or where's my safety valve or none of that. So... We got to, I think, look at this, you know, from a ability standpoint, the throw he made, and also from the standpoint that, uh, you know, he's learning. He's grasping the concepts of being an NFL quarterback and, uh, and, and what you got to do and what you got to know to be effective. Yeah, he talked about on that play, he said, I looked for my first read covered. I looked at my second read. Yeah. He said, and then I knew I had my safety valve down there in Pettis. And then when Montgomery pulled the secondary defender away, touchdown. You know, this, the same play, you, you just brought up, my mind just flashed to something else. The second touchdown that we have in the end zone. To EQ Brown. To EQ Brown. On that play, we ran that play a lot. And all that is 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 one, forget about who's doing what. We used to do it with a fullback, and Raymond Harris, and a tight end, okay? Forget about who. It doesn't matter. They did it with a back in the flat, and it was a wide receiver ran the corner. So it's a two-level route. 
So your quarterback does the play fake. He kind of rolls out, and he's looking right now, and I can throw the short one in the flat, but if the big one's open over the top, I take the shot on a big one. It really puts the defense in a bind. You know, am I going to take the short throw, or am I going to stay back? Well, another that was a good decision. And I think both of them were open. I think both of them were open, but, uh, you know, he made a great decision and a great throw. Okay, so, Coach, he says, yeah. I – Saw on film, Trent Williams would go kick, kick when they were going to pass with his foot. So he saw it, and he went, they're passing. Bam! Gets off the ball, sacks the quarterback. In fact, do you know he was the highest-rated defensive rookie from the entire draft the, yesterday? Night. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that tells you he's a smart guy, you know, and that tells me, one, he's a smart guy, and number two, he's done his homework. He studied the tape. I remember, uh, actually, it was my first year with the Bears. We're playing the Eagles up there in the old vet. And uh, I forget who their quarterback was for the Eagles. But he sets up real quick, one, two, three, and he's going to just throw a sh quick little slant out to the, to the flat, little hitch pattern. And Richard Dent jumps up and catches the ball in midair. And uh, interception, us, going the other way. And he comes off, and I said, Richard, what uh, – you know, what was that? Teach me something. You know, I want to learn. I mean, you're, you're a Hall of Fame. Tell me something. And he says, Coach, everything's about this guy's set. I've studied this guy. I've known him for years. He says, I can tell when the ball is going to come out like it did. I can tell when it's going to be, you know, by the depth and by how he sets. And he says, I knew it was coming out. I just waited and jumped up and caught it. So, uh, you know, and that's a Hall of Fame player, obviously, right. Richard Dent. But uh, this is real encouraging to hear, uh, hear a rookie do it. Yeah, fifth-round rookie who – was limited in practice during the week, and they thought, banged up, not sure he yeah. can go. And then he gets a sack and a half. Pretty I, you know what? That's, I'm glad he said that because, I mean, I, I, when I saw him get the sack, I was thinking in my mind, how the heck did that happen? You right. know, against, against an all-pro, one would be the best in the business, right? Right. Uh, now I know. So I'm, I learned something right there. Do you know that when I was a basketball coach in college, there was this kid at Bowling Green that right. used to torture us. We, we, we can't guard this guy. It was his dad. Really? I got a text last night. You know that kid that just made the sacks for the Robert, Bears? How about that? That's, his dad was the guy that drove us insane. That's great. Very cool. Uh, let's also talk about the running game. David Montgomery, only 17, he had 70 carries, only 26 yards. What was going on there? Because they did get pretty good productivity out of Khalil Herbert. Yeah. I, it, yeah. You know, the difference between... David Montgomery and uh, Herbert. Herbert, I think, and I'm thinking the the runs. You know, Herbert's a, a kind of a more straight line guy. You know, and Montgomery sometimes those backs, and Lashawn McCoy sometimes would be this way with me. You know, Ricky Williams was a downhill guy, tough runner, straight ahead, not not just straight ahead. I mean, you know, make guys miss, but more get to the line of scrimmage. Where McCoy was kind of bouncing and looking for the cut and feel a little more shifty. And that's what I saw yesterday would separate these two. You know, in those wet conditions, you're not going to be able to plant and make the quick cut like you normally would. You don't have the footing. And I think that may have hampered uh, Montgomery a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I'm just sitting back watching it and saying, this guy's looking for the cuts all the time. The other guy was going straight downhill. I think that was the difference. Uh, in between the backs. But I'll tell you what, it's a great change of pace. We need them both. Yes. You need two running backs, and I know that the Bears are going to run the ball and be committed to it. They have to. And uh, so I like it. I'm saying it as a positive. I was just trying to identify what I saw, why they were a little bit different yesterday. All right, one last thing before I show you a video i got to get you to react to. Eddie Jackson looked like the old Eddie Jackson yesterday, and he talked about, seeing the play as Lance set up to throw and knowing he's going right there and he jumped in front and stole it. Lance said, I looked him off with my eyes. I thought for sure I had baited him and Eddie didn't bite. It's good to see him back doing what he does. He, he's got to do things that you don't coach. You know, that, I said that about him when he was a rookie from Alabama. And uh, we, we saw that yesterday. I think two things with Eddie. Number one, he didn't have a very good year last year. Now he got a new coaching staff, and I promise you, these guys from the get-go have have really put him under the microscope. Challenged, said, him. challenged him. And then you get a guy like Brisker to come in who isn't going to take a back seat to anybody. Stud. And all of a sudden, that takes your game up another level, you know? So there's uh, 
a lot of motivation for, for Eddie to bounce back and play like he's capable of. No one's asking him to do anything more. Just play like your God-given ability that you have, and I, I, think, uh, I think we're going to see that this year. I really do. Yeah, I hope so. All right, let's check out what happened in Miami yesterday. used to be the head coach of the Dolphins. A tailgater apparently left a charcoal grill going, <laughs> and that led to this disaster. Flames spread, incinerated eight cars outside Hard Rock Stadium. Nothing like that at your first tailgate at the backyard brawl in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago? No, you know what? There could have been. There was a lot of, a lot of, uh, no, I didn't see a fire, though. But that was my first tailgate. I mean, you know, 40 years of coaching, right? I've never had a Saturday off, and I've never gone to a game before, you know, on a weekend. So I go up to Pittsburgh, and uh, my wife said, we got to go. We got four stops to make. So I hit four tailgates before I went out there and flipped the coin. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. And, and, and Pittsburgh's, uh, 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 they, they, they know how to do it. They know how to do it. That Iron City beer was flowing uh, <laughs> endlessly. So Absolutely. now you can see. Cigar and an a Iron City light, I was right at home. So you can see now when you were coaching why people get all lubed up and eat food. And then <laughs> I know. Here we go. Yeah, we're still no excuses to yell those mean things at me, though. No, you know? never. No, never. Never. <laughs> Absolutely. Coach, thanks.